Welcome back. So in a previous video, we'd seen how we can use if, and now we're going to extend that and look at using if else execution. So if else is very similar to if, but instead of using the if keyword, we use this dollar character. And this will allow us to, instead of just saying, if this is true, do this, we can now say, if this is true, do this. If it's false, do this other thing. So in this example here, you'll see that happening. So we're saying if false here, so a condition goes first, just like with if, and then the first statement after that will be evaluated when true, and then the one after that will be evaluated when false. So for example here, it's false, so it's the second one that's being evaluated, which is just stringing the symbol hey, whereas if we change this to be true, it's also doing the upper command here, which just changes something from lowercase to uppercase. Okay. So it's fairly straightforward. Um, we can also use a parameter that's outside of our function. Um, so our, our global context um, setting. So remember we learned about our global variables and local variables. So um, if we have this global variable caps on set to be true, and then we're creating a function and we're combining our if statement with our if else statement here. And we're saying if the input, so my X is gonna be my input parameter, if the type of it is not a character, remember 10H is our character data type, um, I want to string it. So I want to make it a character. Um, and then I'm saying if else, so if caps on is true, which it isn't, um, but if caps on is true, I want to make it uppercase, otherwise just leave it as it is. So if we run this function with hey, and we say um, it's, it's set to false, we can see here, all that's happening is the string part of this. The other part of that isn't happening, which is doing the uppercase down here. It's just returning um, X on its own. And then by comparison, when I turn caps on to be true and run the same thing, we can see that now is returning uppercase characters. So this can be really useful um, because we can change how a function is actually gonna execute um, with this external global variable just by simply changing it from false to true. Okay. Now in the next example, we're just showing we don't have to pass um, 0B or 1B directly. We're able to pass any statement that will evaluate to a true or false. So if we're doing val within 2030 here um, and we're passing the parameters 50 and 25, we'll see with 50, um, we know that isn't within 20 or 30 and 25 falls within that boundary. Um, so that's that's useful. Um, so once we have our if else statement, we're doing that evaluation of the condition. Then we're gonna assign um, either or to be within or outside, depending on the result of this. And then I'm going to combine that with range. So when we run this function here, you'll see we get um, outside range when it's 50 and in within range when it's 25. Okay, um, we can also have multiple expressions in here. So we don't just have to have one um, for a true expression or one for our false expression. So we'll see that in the next example here. So we've got a balance here and in our function be frugal, we're saying if the balance is less than 10, I wanna do two things. I wanna do standard error output and I wanna tell the, um, my user, don't spend your money. Gotta keep the money in the, in the bank um, and return one B. And then in the second instance here, I was saying the balance is greater than 10. So you're free for all to go shopping. So let's see what happens when we run be frugal. Um, so when we run be frugal here, you'll note we get the standard error in red here. And then we're also returning 1B. And then if we change the balance to 19.32, which is obviously greater than 10, let's see what happens. It's telling us, yeah, you got the green light to go shopping. Um, and we're also returning this zero B. Now, if we had a semicolon in here, just note that value would be suppressed. So the same would go for the one B here as well. Um, so depending on which behavior you prefer or want for your function, you can decide to have a semicolon or not. Okay. Um, so up to now, we've just looked at using one B or zero B as our condition. We do also have the option to use other data types that are, that are whole numbers. So, um, we're saying this time here is zero P and this here is a type um, timestamp, which ultimately ultimately is a whole number underneath. So if we run this, we see um, we're getting this value out and we're saying if this 
return after midnight or midnight. So we obviously get midnight returned here. And then when we increment by one, we get after midnight. So we could even do um, something more straightforward with an integer or a long value. So if zero, um, let's print pi, otherwise we'll just return by, and then we'll do the same for um, non-zero value. So for example, here we get by, otherwise we get high, anything other than zero is going to be high. So that's their true equivalent, basically. Um, okay. But most often you'll see 1B or 0B. That's the norm. But um, it is interesting to know that you have that option available to you. Okay. Um, so next we've got this exercise here. So create a function chalk prices that takes a symbol as input. And if the symbol is Mars, it should return the price for a Mars chocolate bar, which is 2.5. And then we also want you to say, if anything else is given to the function, so any other symbol is given to the function, print why bother to standard error and return zero. Okay, so have a go at that and pause the video. And then when you're happy, we'll move on and look at the extended form of if else. So this is basically when we want to do multiple um, conditions. So we don't just want to have one condition at the start. We want to have multiple nested conditions and we can do that. We can just continue to add them basically. So we're going to pose the scenario to kind of explain that. Um, so we're capturing data from a sensor on a machine that deals with a woolen textile. Um, so wool has an effective ironing range between 160 and 170. Anything that's lower than that is probably going to be ineffective and give a warning. And then anything above that is going to actually melt the fabric and that's catastrophic. So we're going to say, right, first of all, we're going to check um, our higher threshold. So we've got um, thresholds as one of the inputs here. And that's between 160 and 170. That's our range. Um, and then we're passing in sensor temp here. So sensor temp is going to be passed in in these three examples here separately. So if sensor temp, the user's passing in, is greater than thresholds one, remember thresholds one will be um, 170 in this example, um, because our zero index is the first element. So if we just run that, we'll see it's 170. So this higher threshold basically, um, if my sensor is going over the higher threshold, I'm going to signal an, an error and exit the function. And because we're using signal he here, it's going to break the function at this point and signal an error and using this as the error message. And then we're going to have our second condition statement. So you'll see all I did was um, list a second statement. I didn't have to do anything additional other than add it after the semicolon. And we're going to do a second check here saying, okay, if sensor temp um, is less than thresholds, um, and it'll only get to this point, remember, if our, our first threshold wasn't broke, um, because otherwise it would have broken at this function and exited here. So if um, our, it's not going over the higher threshold, then it'll get as far as here, check. If it's too low, so below the, the 160 value, I want to return to the user, the temperature is too low, ironing is ineffective. And then finally, after my final semicolon, I get, oh, that's their, our other piece of the statement, and it's saying, actually, Neither of these two things happened. So I'm just going to return a message to the user saying temperature within range. And we don't have to return this final else. So we're doing if do this, else do this, else or otherwise do this final one, which is optional. Okay, so let's define this function and run our three thresholds. So we've got one that's 160, that's within the range. So happy days, nothing's happening. Um, That's going to melt any... Uh, woolen textiles here then we've got 150 it's going to warn the user you're running a bit low but it's not going to break the function or, or stop the manufacturing process in the real world and then when we are going too high this is going to break it's going to shut down the machine and say temperature too hot stop immediately and and break the function okay so you can see how we're building up these um if else statements so depending on the use case and application you might decide to use signal you might decide to use minus two which is the standard error or you might just want to do some logging with standard out to notify the user okay so next we've got um, an extension of that um and it's just bringing in indexing um also user defined functions projections um signaling of errors and signaling to standard error um as well so very much similar to before we're just extending it a little bit um and we're going to create some 
different thresholds basically we've got one for wool and one for viscose um, so rather than just having one threshold we're going to have two for different fabrics um, and we're going to set our parameters who so are too low too high and just right so depending on um, which of these things happen we're going to give different messages and different behaviors so minus two here would be standard error signaling and then we're going to just give this generic null we don't want anything to happen when it's just right so have a look at that first example and then go through um, these questions so what assumptions are made about the inputs to our functions um, what input would cause outright errors and what would cause logical errors and then can you try and improve the function to avoid these errors and what other issues can you think of here so I'd encourage you to spend some time um, and go through that try and answer those questions and to modify the function and see if you can improve it in any way um, and we're just saying here you know there, this isn't exhaustive um, you know there's there's a big difference between writing code for user-facing applications versus back-end code um, and most things the more you know what you're trying to achieve before you start the better so um, obviously we're not going to be able to catch all um, eventualities in this short function um, so the more you know about um, you know your, your basically your requirements um, you can add as many if else statements and, and catches that you need um, and, and logging um, as well that's that's applicable okay and we also have an extra exercise down here at the end just to going over those points again so creating a, a new function a dyadic one so we know that just means taking two parameters um, and it's going to compare the first argument to a symbol if it's a symbol print the second argument as lowercase otherwise return the value of the second argument as a string so that's kind of going back to the stuff we've seen earlier except we were using um, uppercase up there okay so have a go at those and i shall see you in the next video